everyone and welcome to your Sunday Whole Health Project session. I'm Stella from Stella Movement and I'm delighted to be um, giving you a session today on the hips. So thinking about getting lots of juicy active joint mobility in your hips, move them in all the different directions that they're designed to move, especially if you're sitting at home a lot, maybe just in chairs and not using your whole uh, joints hip capacity. So it's a pretty sturdy joint, it has lots of rotation and obviously it supports our upper body, carry, they carry us around and support quite a lot of load. So we want them nice and uh, healthy, nice and juicy and this is a really nice complementary practice to a session that Rachel has already done called Happy Hips. So I do suggest also going back and doing her session as well which is a little bit more stretchy. This one's going to make your hips work a little bit more um, and I'm going to suggest if you have any knee issues, please do grab a towel to place underneath your knee if you need anything underneath the knee joint to offload. And if you really have sort of tight hamstrings or struggle with a few things, grab two blocks or two sturdy books is all you'll need. For instance, if we're here and we're doing a hamstring stretch and you can't quite get down and straight in the back, it's always nice to prop yourself up. Not necessary, however, it's always nice for a bit of an aid. So, uh, just before I do begin, um, I do obviously thank you for coming in and joining. I have left in the description uh, my PayPal account if you should wish to make a donation, that is greatly appreciated. However, if you can't, if it's not feasible, no problem, this is uh, always a gift and I do ask that you share it around and tell more people about the Whole Health Project. So many amazing classes on here at the moment and amazing practitioners. So, without further ado, we're going to start off standing. Stand with your feet hip width distance apart. Have your hands onto your hips so that you can feel what your pelvis is doing, starting nice and steady. And let's just first of all test your active hip mobility. Stand on one leg and we'll take this leg out in front. So it should be your left leg. Rotate the knee outwards so you feel a turning in the hip joint here. This is where your hip joint is. Try and stay nice and strong through your core so there's a little bit of sort of a, a radiating energy out through your midsection into every single tissue in your body you're not floppy here you want to take it up yeah this is a little bit of balance to start with so by all means if already you're feeling the wobbles and you need to rest on a chair do grab a chair as well so you lift it up and you lift it as high as you can searching for that end range scraping the top of the hip joint terrible word to, to use but it is searching the top and pushing it across the midline so you get a deep groin feeling of our work there you want to keep it as high as you can everyone and take it out to the side into hip abduction without your pelvis pulling back in space so your hip bones imagine they're lasering the wall in front of you not off to the side get your bum cheek working take it high and take it back until the hip gets a little bit stuck that's your range, probably going back that way. So now what has to happen is you have to go into internal rotation. The knee goes down, the heel goes up. This one always feels a little bit funky. Yep, totally normal. Feel it oh, a bit sticky in the hip joint. Try and keep nice and strong. And then push that leg back behind you without toppling the chest forward. Stay straight. Squeeze the bottom cheek, the hamstring, lower knee to knee. Let's reverse. Push it back. Search for the side wall. Search for the ceiling. Touch the ceiling as you bring it back and tap back down. That's one. We're going to just do two on each side. If I was doing more of a session, a private session, I would do more than this. This, set, uh, this class today is a taster of movement exploration and joint movement in your hips. Yeah, so I will move th through things and explain them, but I'm going to do not so many reps of stuff. So you search, you search, you search. Getting wonderful activation already in the whole area of your hips. Let's change sides. So change to the other leg. These are called controlled articular rotations, all in the hip joint. Second side, raise it up. I sometimes find it easy to punch my arms out if I'm not holding onto my hips to stay nice and energized. Otherwise, this is a good place to be. Come on up. Take it as high as you can. You imagine if you're pulling your knee, it can go quite high. Could you keep it there? and hold it. Take it across the midline, squeeze in the thighs, higher, and then wind it out to the door, or imaginary wall, whatever you've got going over there. Take it high. Take it back. Something's going to give, something's going to stop you moving, so you need to internally rotate. Da -da 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 -da, knee down, ankle up, 
a very odd feeling. Pushing back and lowering down. Reverse. Squeeze it back behind you. Search for that back wall. Search for the side wall, the ceiling. The ceiling out in front of you. Rotate, tap down. Just one more. Up. Great practice to get into the habit of this one every morning. Warm up your hips. It should feel like work if you're radiating energy from every single tissue from your center and working your core. And down. Take it nice and wide. That might have been an interesting <laughs> exploration in your hips. I always like to start with that. We're going to come down into a Cossack squat. See how far you can go down. Take a lunge into one leg and guide the knee over the foot, relatively the second and third toe without the knee collapsing in. Get a bum, stick it out. So widen your sit bones or widen your bottom cheeks. Let that happen. The other foot is going to turn up, knee to the ceiling. There's a slight rotation in the hips. Yep, you don't have to come so far down if you're feeling that this is really hard. You could just stay up. Otherwise, how deep can you go? Challenging. A, dorsiflexion at your ankle and deep hip flexion. Come back up, change sides. Just testing it out. Deep dorsiflexion, hip flexion, external rotation. This leg externally rotates in the socket. This happens up here. Let's do one more on each side. Stay low. Travel. Lift the chest if you can. Stay low. Travel. Let's take it onto the seat, stay on this leg and just come down and check in with how you feel in a hip flexor stretch. Communicating, being aware of how you feel in the front of your hip joint. The front of your hip joint is now in extension. Lots of blood flow going through, yeah? You want to feel that there's this nice release and opening here. There's not any sharp pain here or here. So to feel that, breathing in. Push onto the front foot, lift a little out of the lower back, tuck the tail under. Pubic bone pulls forward and up. Keep this height and just soften into that lunge. Not to dump into it. If you need blocks or books either side of you, this is quite a good time to bring them to the side. And this is just checking in with how you feel in your hips, in the front. I always say if you're holding something, do a little visual scan through your body. Watch that you're not gripping, the jaw is soft. Relaxing angry face and breathing into the area and being mindful of where you're working. Let's test your hamstrings now. Take it back. Wander your blocks with you or some of you may be able to come onto the floor. I want you to take the top toes up or the front toes up and align your pelvis so this front hip bone may need to pull back in space. You align your hip bones level with each other. You want to just test in how straight can you get your back. Reach the tail, not downwards, but up towards the back of the head. And then just hinge forward. I already feel a wonderful juicy stretch in my hamstring, as opposed to this, where I don't feel much, it's more stretching my back. I want you to have a straight, more neutral back and check in how that hamstring feels. Breathe. Four, three, two, and one. Good, let's come back into the Cossack squat. Change sides. Take the blocks with you if you need. It's your hip flexor stretch, again communicating in the front of the hip joint, watching you're not collapsing into your lower back. So utilize your legs, your leg strength already. Push into the floor, push the crown of the head up to the ceiling, and lightly guide your tailbone under. A few little tiny little adjustments, right? To make sure that you're not just collapsing and dumping in and feeling pain in the lower back or aggravation here. Make it juicy. Stay there. Breathe. Three. Shoulders soft. Two. Does it feel any different from the first side? Observation, of course. No judgment, just an observation. And test your hamstrings. Wander your blocks, your standing books, or nothing. Start to straighten your front leg. Have the toes turning up. And pull that hip back in space. The bum cheek pulls back, this hip bone pulls forward. It should intensify the stretch and make it juicy. Yeah. Tail reaches to the back of the head. You're pulling your whole torso, not rounding it to that front leg to feel your hamstring stretch 
and sinking into it, breathing. For four, for three, for two, for one, and releasing, coming on out of that, wandering back to the center. Just have your hands on your thighs, pushing your thigh bones outwards, and get a bottom here. So from the side, I want you to stick the tail towards the back of the head, move into gentle circles, allow some freedom of motion in your hips. However, do note, your hips are in a flexed position. It's not gonna feel super smooth. Yeah, they don't have very far to go. Reverse your circle. This is just more of a test is do you have the access to be able to move your pelvis around the hip joints or does it feel like D sort of square dancing? Yeah, trying to find fluidity here. And then release. Walk your feet a little bit closer in. Wide squat position. Grab onto your ankles. Hold, breathe in. Let's just do four of these. Exhale, straighten the legs, round your back. Inhale, bend, lift the chest. You're testing how far you can get your bottom down without your knees collapsing inwards. Use your arms, push them outwards. Knees over the second and third toe. Let's go for three. And drop down. Two. Last one. Hold it there. Take your hands out in front. Step your feet back. Drop your knees down. This is on the knee series, so if you do need any prop underneath your knee joints, rolled up tail, please do so. Your knees are together, hands are wide. Roll off onto the side of the one knee. Drop the hip, lean into the sling of the side waist, the side hip, stretch it out. Strengthen the shoulder and back. Other side, leaning in. Always nice to have a little bit of a stretch into the tissues and bring it back. We're going to do the controlled articular rotations in a four point kneeling position. I prefer forearms as it gives my hips more active range of motion, but you're more than welcome to do it on your hands. Here, I get the ability to raise my leg up higher. Everyone, your upper body is strong. Let's just start your core work, Pilates class. Everything should be working here. So belly is gently drawing in, lower belly, chest slightly reaching forward. Take your leg and raise it up to the ceiling with your heel close to your bottom. So the knee doesn't move. We're moving at the hip joint. So you raise it up and you go, how high can I get this without going into the lower back? So if you feel your lower back fire off, no problem. Lower the leg a little, scoop the lower belly, squeeze in around the butt cheek, take it higher. Keep that height. Look towards the camera, search for the side wall. Keep it high, keep it high. Try and dip your ankle a little bit lower than your knee. You should be burning on the outside of that, that uh, butt cheek. And notice if you're collapsing to the other side, lean to where that knee's going. Abs on fire, hopefully, and bring the knee down and tap. We go again, lift up, one. Out to the side, two. Search for the side wall, reaching, control it down. And again, two more, up, side, last one. Shoulders away from the ears, collarbones wide. The stiller you make your upper body, the more emphasis it comes into your hips. Let's go the other way, out to the side. Lift up, lift up, lift up. Control it, circle, cross the midline, squeeze behind the other knee. Lengthen your waistline. And then lower back down. And again, up, circle, and squeeze, and then down, up. There is at no point that these muscles around the hip joint stop working, yeah? You're in control. And hold. Stretch for a moment. Take a big deep breath in. We come back. All right. This one is called fire, hyd uh, fire hydrant and the kickback. We'll start with the kickback. Lower belly in. You take your leg up, squeezing up. Heel close to the bottom. Keep the leg high. Lengthen out. Bend again. Catch something behind your knee. Squeeze it. Pull back down. Part two. Fire hydrant, knee and ankle come out to the side. 
Have a look, try and get your knee higher. Hold it, stretch your leg out if you can. Now, if that means that you need to lower your leg and slide it along the floor, totally cool with that. Do what you've got to do and just watch that you're not collapsing into that waist. Lengthen your waistline out. Bend it, bring it back in. We go up, up to the ceiling, high. Lengthen, keep that height. Bend, squeeze something behind your knee, drop the knee down. Boom, out to the side. Fire hydrant. Long waistline, keep it high, reach. Bend, back in. One more time. Up. Lengthen high. Squeeze behind the knee. Lower down. All right, fire hydrant, up. Lengthen, hold, and lower that foot down. Whew. Sink back for a moment, give yourself a little stretch. And then come forward. All right, I did this in the very first session. So, your forearms are on the mat. Your leg is outstretched, yeah? And you're trying to turn your kneecap and your thigh bone ever so slightly up towards the ceiling. The arm that is closest to this leg, so the same arm, same side, is going to be the arm that pushes more into the mat to give you the stability. Connecting into your core, guys. Push into this outside arm. Look to your foot. And start to work the muscles as best as you can around the hip joint. With um, communication with your foot and your hip that you want to lift it off. Some of you will be able to lift the foot off and hold for 10 seconds. Some of you just have to get that feeling or... Jedi mind tricking your foot to lift off. So here we go. Wide shoulders. Squeeze around the butt, side butt cheek and try and lift it off. Hold 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Drop. Rest back. And come forward again. All right. This time, take it a little bit further back in space. The foot, turn the knee up to the ceiling, still keep pushing with his arm, and lift off, or we'll think about lifting off. 10, 9, 8, 7, try and turn that kneecap to face up towards the ceiling, and down. One more round, here we go, breathing in, and we go, up, a little bit further back, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, squeeze as much as you can, lift it up, bend the knee, come up onto your hands, take that leg back behind you to open up this hip and just create a wonderful fluid stretch. So take all of that effort out and move it more into a graceful extension rotation of the spine, pushing this foot into the floor and holding for four, for three, two, and one, circle the arm, bring it back, come up onto your knees. What you should be experiencing is activation in around here, quite a lot of stimulation, and just circle your arms, because we're gonna go straight into the other side and get the other side done. Quite challenging because of the, um, the relationship of where your leg is, you're having to work against gravity in a quite a low position. So it is quite tough. And if your foot does not lift off, that's totally fine. You think about it, you're still communicating with the tissues and around the hip joint to get it there. And one day it will lift off and you'll be like, yes, it's off. And then you can work on more height. You get stronger and stronger and stronger. So these are all little tidbits of fun hip exploration. Let's change sides and do the other side. So. Da, 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 da. Second side of the controlled articular rotations. Coming on down. Forearms, if you did it on your hands and knees, totally fine. Do that again. You take it up to the ceiling. I'm going to turn slightly sideways. Up to the ceiling. Hold. Play around with where you feel this is working. Quite often it will go into the back and it will dip like this. So. Take all the wrinkles out of the lowest uh, part of your singlet, bring them into here, belly on, bum working. All right, we go out to the side, searching for that side wall, leaning to where that knee's going, dip it down and in, lift 
up, squeeze. Keep squeezing around the hip joint as you reach it out to the side as high as possible. Reach, lean, two more. And last one. Guys, if there is any sort of clicking, any, you know, uh, sounds in the hip joint, that is normal. You don't want obviously acute pain, but there is gonna be, as a new exploration of hip movement, a little bit of grittiness perhaps, as you congruently move your hip, uh, hip joint in the socket. Reverse. Take it straight out to the side. Feed it up as high as you can, cross the midline, squeeze, slide back in. Forward, side, up, and down. Again, I would do more of these. Just four in each direction. And you're gonna go all these muscles in around your hip joint are collaborating. They're all the muscle fibers are starting to fire off, not just specifying one movement action. All right, we go. The kick back to the fire hydrant and then to the lift offs. So lift up as high as you can. Really get the knee higher than the hip joint. Find that extension, reaching the toe away from you. The leg stays high, just squeezing something like say a tennis ball behind the knee, lower down. Then you come out to the side, the side hip works. Lift it high, try and keep that leg in the same position, the, the thigh bone, reach out into a kick, bring it back and down, and again, up, hold, higher, reach. We shorten the hamstring, bum and hamstring really on fire now, and down. Abductor muscles, side hip muscles, hold. A little bit of quads, and the thighs will be stretching. Pull it back, and down, one more time. Lift on up, higher, belly on, Reach it, bend it, and down. You'll notice I'm not cueing any breath, yeah? I'm just hoping that you're having good quality breaths as you move through this. Try not to hold it. Try and breathe through the tough parts and find a breath that is suitable for you that feels manageable. Let's slide that leg out. So it's straight out in line with hip joint and heel abducting at the hip, working into inner thighs. All right, so from here, this forearm comes down. This arm, this shoulder, will be working a lot harder than the other side, and the core will be working a lot here. Have a look at your leg. Communicating, you're gonna to talk to your hip. Get these guys to switch on to lift your foot off the floor. Here we go, three rounds. Squeeze around that hip joint, push into this arm, lift off 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, make sure your back's not rounding, long spine, two, one, drop down, wrist sink it back. Woo! What about you guys, but my bum is on fire, coming forward. All right, let's move that leg back a little tiny bit. Try and tilt the knee and the thigh up towards the ceiling a little. Slight external rotation. Push again, communicate with your butt, get it to lift off. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, sink back, final round. We'll be taking that leg back a little bit further. Here we go. Bring the leg back behind you, just a little bit. It's going to work a little bit more into the back butt fibers. Just playing around with different fiber orientation here. Hold that. Squeeze that butt right in around here. Lift the leg 10. Nine, eight, seven, pull your chest forward to the front of the mat, lower belly on, and bring it in. Woo! And rest for a moment. And then just butterfly your legs out. Good work. So hopefully <laughs> you're keeping up so far. And just to let you know, in this class, because we're working with sometimes end range joint activation, it is quite normal to get cramps. You're not doing anything wrong. 
Yeah, try and work through them if you need to drop the leg at any stage. All right, guys, you're gonna come onto your side. Oh, should feel nice, yeah? And some of you might like to be up like this, that's fine, but I'm gonna give my upper body a rest and come fully down to my side, bend my bottom leg in. I'm gonna place my top hand on my top hip, uh, firmly holding my pelvis, front of the hip bone, back of the butt cheek, and pulling that way. Keep the, the hip still, the, sorry, the pelvis steady. Waistline lifted, we might as well get our core work happening too. And I want you to just rotate the thigh bone inwards and then rotate the thigh bone outwards. So you're playing around with the range of motion that is available at the top of the hip joint. When you rotate inwards, the knee will face down to the floor. When you rotate outwards, the knee will face up to the ceiling. Noticing the action of this, how it feels in your hip joint, what feels easier. The feeling of all these little muscles around here acting upon the hip joint starting to fire off. They'll all sort of be going da, 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 as you turn. I want you to experience that knowing that there are so many different muscles acting upon the hip joint. Yeah, we can't uh, purely expect, say, just a squat to target everything and get, you know, us a juicy bum. We've got to work everything here. All right, so from this position, hold. We're gonna keep the legs straight now. A single leg kick, our Pilates exercise in side lying. Take your hand down. Imagine you're balancing a tray of champagne flutes. Why not? On your upper arm. Pull the leg forward, keeping the waistline from bunching and dropping down and do a little kick. <sighs> Push through there like you're pushing onto a bike pedal. Keep the ankle and the knee at hip height. And then open up your hips, see how much range you can get here without your upper body falling forward. And let's go for six. Reach and squeeze back. Five. Challenge is to not move your upper body. What can go wrong is a lot of uh, upper body movement. And you can also end up rounding your back here, doing this sort of stuff. So a skill, obviously, and takes a bit of practice. Hold it now. I want you to reach back, grab behind the ankle and get a well-deserved quadriceps stretch. Have a look down your midline and notice, especially if you're very quad dominant, you might notice the knee pulls forward of the hip bone and you've got this bulging quad coming out. Everyone's different, right? So what I want you to do is try and push the pubic bone forward and up, lengthen your tailbone, and then create a gentle kick back. This is a passive stretch. Your arm is holding you here. But what I want you to do is start to squeeze behind the knee, work your hamstring, stay in that same position and just take your arm away. Hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, push the thigh bone back, two, one, pull the knee forward, we go into bicycle, knee to elbow, lengthen the leg, straight leg, sweep it back, squeeze behind the knee joint, feel hamstring bump, pull forward, dip. Good. So if you're at the circus and you're kind of one of those dudes on one of those big, crazy, huge tricycles or whatever they are, single leg um, bicycle, you're imagining that that's what's creating this big sweep. Fluid, however. Last two. And then last one. And then bring it in. Roll onto your back. The same leg that you had in the air is the same leg that lifts up. Single leg circle and Pilates, your arms are usually down. I want you to see if you can keep your head down but form fists. Gently press your lower back to the mat. Feel like you're pushing outwards on two walls and you're going to try and keep your fists off the mat and still so there's no wobbling. Cross the midline with that leg, lower down. Keep both butt cheeks anchored as you sweep out. Now the challenge is how close to your face can you get your thigh bone? Actively working, quads and hip flexors, cross. Five. If this is too strong in your hip joint, no problem guys, you bend your knee and you do a lower level, smaller lever, but still circle in the hip joint. Last one. All right, hold on behind the thigh, give it a little pull. Once again, you should probably get more range here because it's a passive stretch. Breathe in. Draw your chin to your chest curler. And then see if you can 
Roll yourself up, climbing up the tree to your leg. Again, passively, pull it in, strong arms. Wonderful stretch for the hamstrings, but can you now hold it there without the leg dropping down? Pull up on your quads, kneecap pulls up, deep into your hip here, and we're going to release the leg. Hold eight, seven, six, five, four, three, pull it towards you, two, and one. Woof. Let's change sides. Straight to the other side. Holding on to the hip. Bottom knee is bent. Gives you a little bit uh, to rest on. Lift the bottom waistline away from the floor. Notice how much lift I have. Hold on to your pelvis. Rotate in. Rotate out. Does it feel different from the other side? Nothing else moves? Just this. And if you are limiting range of motion, don't force it, just explore. How does it feel going in? Can you feel the back butt muscles fire off just gently as you go back? For three, for two, for one. Hold it with the knee facing forward, just right through the center, hand comes down, balancing that tray of champagne flutes. Anything that you, uh, you want to be balancing on your arm and the leg comes forward, long waistline. Hold. To get juicier into this, reach the tail to the back of the head, double pulse. <sighs> Point and reach it back. Double pulse. Five. For four. In Pilates, this is part of your side leg series. Great work for the side hip. Great mobility work for your hip as well. Active mobility. Last one. Reach it back, bend the knee, hold onto your ankle and stretch. Passive stretch of your quadricep, gentle hip flexor stretch. Tuck the tail under, pull the pubic bone forward and up to your nose, and try and guide that knee back in space, lengthening your quads. Softening into the tissues with each exhalation, and then start to feel like you've got something behind here, and you're trapping, say if it was my hand, and you're trying to squeeze my hand, and you hold that, and then you take the hand away. Working into your hamstring and, and your calf, hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bicycle, pull the knee forward. Reach it straight, sweep it, bend it with that knee back, back, back behind the hip. Keep going. For this one, quite often what I see is. You come here, you bend the knee, but you don't get any work in the hamstring because the knee's forward of the hip. So really feel that backwards motion. Back, squeeze, last one. Back and squeeze. And pull in and lie onto your back again for your single leg circle. Ah, finally a position where you can feel where you are in space. Relax your shoulders down to the floor. Take the arms up. Of course you can have them down. I like this version so I can see my hands staying still. The leg that we were working is the one that is up in the air. Good. Cross the midline. Let the hip lift off. Lower down. Both bottom cheeks stay. Work your abs. Pull it. Five. I'm having to work strong in my core to keep everything else steady. Focusing on my hip. Remember what I said at the other side? If it's too much of a long lever, shorten it by bending the knee. Last one. Bring it up, hold behind the thigh, stretch it out. <sighs> Pulling the thigh towards you, enjoying that stretch. And then climbing the tree, coming up to here. Encouraging once again a deeper uh, hamstring stretch. Also really lovely to be able to use the arms to pull your thigh bone deeper into the socket. Nourishing feeling, and then pulling communicating with that hip joint where you're wanting your thigh bone to be. Deep in there. And then now start to communicate around the uh, muscles acting around the hip joint. So first of all, deep into your hip flexor, you're gonna keep this angle here. Quadriceps pulling your kneecap up. Having a look at your toe and try not to let it move. And when you're ready, release. Hold, eight, seven, Six, try and even pull a little bit further forward towards you, two, 
one, and release. Ooh, awesome. Okay, have a nice little stretch here. And either grab a book. It doesn't have to be a book. It could be a towel that you just pull apart. Just something to have over your head. Well, first of all, actually, no, I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to go this way so you can see. You're going to be lying on your back, legs up in the air. It's actually a reformer uh, Pilates exercise called the stag where you go one leg bends out to the side, the other leg reaches out, and then you drive straight up to the ceiling. You're alternating. So it's called the stag or Peter Pan. Opening out. Yep, I want the block or book in your hand, and I want you to move the arms behind you, and again, work into your core. Turn the thighs out, one leg pulls to the side, the other leg reaches. How far can you get them actively moving away from the midline? And then imagine like you've got a spring in between your feet and you squish it as you come back up. Other side, reach, point, pull apart. Squeeze it back together in the thighs. Four, just tasters of these exercises, guys. I would do more. Three, two, one. Bring your heels together. I'll drop the block. And bring the book or the block behind my head just to rest for the moment. Hopefully you can see my legs. What you're going to do is you're going to form a frog. Pulling your heels to your groin. Keeping the spine long. Tail does not lift. You're going to push out. Scoop the belly. Rotate the thigh bones inwards. Squeezing your inner thighs and pulling in. Then you repeat that. You go open frog shape. Push out. Make sure inner thighs, lower belly's on. Rotate inwards. Squeeze everything back through center. You can either do that with your head resting on the floor or grab behind the block, curl up, elbows facing forwards. So you can see what's happening and you're working your abs. So frog, push, rotate in, pull back, frog, push, rotate in. If this is too strong on your back, no problem. Drop the head, take the legs up high. Try not to let them go down too low. You can still get the deep work in your hips. Let's do two more. I'm going to curl up again. So frog, squeeze out, rotate, big toes touch, knees touch, squeeze back in. Frog, and extend, rotate, pull back, and rest. Hug your knees in towards your chest, rock and roll from side to side before you choose a side to come up to and release. Okay, here's a little bit of active functional range conditioning stretching for your hip joint. I would like you to see if you can find yourself in what they call the 90, 90 degree Z sit position. Use your mat, your front shin is, ver is in a parallel line with the front of the mat. The front knee's in line with your hip, so it's not out. Straight there, the toes are curled. Back knee. If you can, get the back knee in line with this hip joint and have the knee and the ankle in alignment so you're not here. This hip is an internal rotation. This hip is an external rotation. If you find it hard to be here and you're toppling over, no worries. Bring the knee in a little bit so you can get yourself upright. All right. This is what we're going to do. You're going to... Fold forward, pushing gently down onto the floor with the leg until you find a gentle stretch in the front of the hip. These toes are flexed. Stay for two really luxurious, more relaxed, yin-like, yielding, surrendering to the floor breaths. And please note that if I was doing a proper functional range conditioning session, it would be up to two minutes of passive stretching before I work into the joint. So you just want to tap into your parasympathetic nervous system to get to communicate with this hip joint to relax it before we start communicating with the tissues and loading the tissues. Today, however, I need to move through to show you what's going to happen. 
All right, you're going to start and you're going to, within 10 seconds, apply pressure evenly downwards through the outer ankle, the outer knee and the outer hip into the ground from 10%, ramping it up to about 85, 90%. Your back is not rounded, your core is energized and you're starting off in a position where you already feel the stretch and you just push down. You're radiating energy up through the rest of your body. We'll do that up to 10 seconds to that intensity and then we'll hold it at about 85% for uh, eight seconds. After that, don't pull back, stay there. Relax that contraction of pushing down to the floor. Try and lift that leg up for eight seconds. So you're working the closing angle here at your hip joint. It's hard. Again, Jedi mind trick. Even if you feel like just communicating, saying lift up leg and it doesn't go, you're still working with the communication in your hip joint. We're gonna do the same thing with the back leg as well. So here we go. Find a position, long spine, pulling your torso forward until you feel the stretch. And then when you're ready guys, breathe in. Soften the jaw and the shoulders, work a little bit of intensity in the core and start to push down 10% into the floor. 20%, 30, 40, pushing 50, 60, 70, 80, push to your 85 and hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Try not to pull your torso back, just take your hands to the floor, relax the pushing down, breathe in. Try and get the ankle and the knee to lift off. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ah, and release. I only have time to do one today. I would do more for sure. Um, but again, this is a taster, okay? Uh, please, we're going to do the internal rotation. So come on up. There's two ways you could do it. First off, see if you can take this hand and grab onto the back thigh and the back ankle like so. It's going to feel pretty grippy. Not nasty, but grippy, crampy up in here. That's completely normal. If you're finding that this is just intolerable and not uh, you're not handling it very well, and you're trying to square your shoulders off to that knee, the other option is being here and allowing that to uh, access that internal rotation easier. Square your torso off to the knee, either choose which one feels good, place your hand here and you're encouraging, pushing this thigh bone down, the inner knee gently down, and the back ankle down. And if you're finding tension in this knee, play around with whether you point the foot or flex the foot, yeah. Same thing, just relaxing, two deep breaths here, breathe in. See if in this weirdest uncomfortable position you can actually relax. You're communicating here, yeah. Internal rotation, a lot of us don't have a huge amount. If you're doing a lot of booty classes, you probably won't be doing a lot of internal rotation. It will feel very tight. All right. Same scenario. You'll stay in this position. Be pushing downwards into the ground, inner knee, inner ankle, pushing that thigh bone down, ramping up to 85%, holding at 85% eight seconds. You'll relax off. When it comes to the other part, you're going to try, without leaning back in space, if you're in this position, that's where you start from, you're going to try and lift that ankle off, further increasing your internal rotation. That's tough. Woo. All right, so if that's too strong to lift the ankle up, just think about the ankle trying to lift up. So here we go. Setting yourself, square yourself off with the knee. Flex the toes if you can. It's quite not look nicer for the knee joint and start to push down 10%. Energy in your, blood, in your core, 20, 30. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, take it up to 85, hold it there, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stop the pushing downwards, breathe in, have a look to your ankle, try not to move your body, and just try and tilt your ankle off the floor, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, Take a side stretch. You're going to need it. <sighs> so when I first started doing those, I couldn't even get my ankle off the floor at all. It does take practice and it's something to work on. This targets deep into the hip capsule, into your internal and external rotation capacity. All right, everyone. Breathing in. 
Let's take a little turn. Oh, feel a juicy stretch. Hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And arrive up. Come onto the toes. Pivot around with the hip. Take that leg in slowly. Take your hands behind your back. And windmill it out. You should feel like you've done a lot of work in your hips. This is not a stretching class. This is an active joint mobility class. It should be tiring and hopefully getting lots of new work into your hips. Let's change sides. Your 90 degree position with your second side, you are here. Front shin is vertical. Oh, sorry, not vertical, in the parallel alignment with the front of the mat. Toes curling towards the knee, knee in alignment with your hip. Back thigh, ideally. This is your hip joint or hip bone, knees in alignment. Ankle the same position. Figure out if that feels okay for your knee, pointing, or whether it's really hard and you need to pull the knee forward. Square your body off to the front and fold forward, lengthening your torso rather than like a pigeon, rounding. Active, pull and then go forward. Two big deep belly breaths in. And I do uh, encourage you to let your belly tissues expand. If you wanted to do this again by yourselves, build yourself up 30 seconds, uh, 90 seconds to two minutes of passive stretching before you add your, what they call in, uh, functional range conditioning, your pails and rails, isometric holds. Okay. Choose a position where you feel your stretch. And here we go, take a breath in. Engage your core, start to push that front leg down, ankle, knee, hip, 10%, 20. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, pushing down 80, as hard as you can to 85, hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, one, don't change anything through the torso, just relax that contraction downwards onto the floor, take a big deep breath in. Try and get that ankle and that knee joint up towards your chest, hold eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. If you're doing that again after the session, do two to three rounds. Okay, facing towards the back leg, holding on like so, if that feels all sorts of uncomfortable and horrible. This is your second position go-to. Point the foot, flex, bring the knee in, play around with what feels better on your knee joint. All right, you're guiding the thigh bone downwards, encouraging this internal rotation that way of that back thigh bone. Two big deep breaths, everyone, breathe in. And out. And in. And out. All right, try and square yourself up even more to your knee, to your ankle. Lean forward, feel that intensity. And then we breathe in. Engage your core. Start to push down 10% in a knee, in an ankle, hip to ear, 20%. Ramping it up, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, pushing 85, down hold 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, stay in the same position, breathe in, try and communicate with that heel, hold, and then try and get that heel off the floor, 8, 7, 6, 5, or the idea of wanting to do it, 2, 1, and release. Come to the side. Ah, oh, stretch it out. And a little rotation. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Come on back up. Pivot on the toes. Open up the hips. And just sit here in a bear sit for a moment and just actively push with your elbows. 
push the knees against the elbows in resistance. Then relax off that contraction of your inner thighs and try and guide those knees down to the floor for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Gather your legs back together. Take your legs out in front. Shake it out. Okay, we're going to need those blocks again. Books or blocks to give you a little bit more height. Come on back to your lunge as we did at the very beginning. So from here... One leg comes forward and one leg goes back. Applying the same uh, added force to, as you can feel here, your hip flexor is on quite an end range, it's at its longest range. While it feels wonderful just to relax into it, I want to get you strong at this range, at this hip flexor. So, what you're going to do is on that um, ramping up position, you're gonna be pulling this knee forward and this heel back, trying to pull the mat together. Yep, squeezing inwards. When it comes to relaxing off the contraction in the other eight seconds, you pull the mat that way. We're trying to lengthen and almost go a little bit deeper. So first of all, just sinking into your stretch, holding the stretch, tucking the tail under, Communicating with the front of the hip joint about what's going to happen. Again, I would stay for a longer passive stretch, but time does not quite allow that with us today. So let's begin. Back it off where you're not hanging into the hip joint. You've still got a stretch. Once, uh, one round only. Push down in your legs. And when you're ready, Pull that way and hold. You should feel strong here and here. Eight. Uh, so ramping up 10%. 20%. 30. 40. 30. Use the blocks if you need. 50. Grow tall. 60. 70. 80. 85. Hold eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Relax off that inward contraction. Breathe in. Now push this foot forward. This leg back and try and sink a little deeper. Hold for eight, seven, the mat's going that way. Two and one, use your blocks. Gently bring yourself back out of it. Stacking the hip above the knee. And just doing very small oscillating circles. Not huge. Telling your hip you still love it. <laughs> And then guys, we are gonna come down. We'll stretch out the front hamstring. Use your blocks. Pull that hip back in space. Lift the chest. And I just want you to feel yourself bending the knee a little bit and pulling that heel to the back of the mat. Yep, hold eight. Not a full uh, contraction like we did before. Keep pulling that hip back in space, the other hip forward. And then allow that knee to straighten. Maybe that leg goes a little bit further along the mat. And then you pull your torso forward, forward, tail reaching to the back of the head. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Back it off. Slide in into a four point position. Before we do the second side, just staying still and circling. Gentle, gentle motion, stirring the pot within your hip joints. Whew. I don't know about you, but my hips feel a lot freer, but they feel definitely worked deep within the joint capsule. All right, let's finish this off everyone. We'll do the second side. So we'll go for the opposite leg comes forward. Use your blocks. Find a stretch that works for you where you're tucking the tail under, lifting out of the lower back and breathing. Space, openness, circulation into this hip. And 
passive stretch, a relaxing stretch here before we integrate more activity. All right, let's begin. Back it off if you need to, so you're not starting off in a point where you're just hanging out of that hip joint. Back it off. Start to pull that back knee forward, that back front heel uh, towards the back knee, drawing into the center, 10%, 20. You're ramping up the engagement, the intensity. We should be at about 50% now. 60, 70, 80, 90, 85, hold for eight, seven, six, five, four. This hip flexor is working strong. And don't change the position, just relax that contraction, breathe in. Now push this thigh bone back, deepen that lunge, pushing this foot forward as the hips open up. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Use your blocks, use your support, push through the front foot, small circles. All right, everyone, we come to the hamstring. Use your blocks, walk back, bend the knee a little, square your hip bones off and think a straight-ish back, tail reaches to the back of the head as opposed to tucking under to purely really get into your hamstring. Start to apply pressure with the heel and pull it back to the back knee. Just for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Relax that contraction, breathe in. Straighten this leg a little bit further out. Tail reaches, now hinge your body forward. Woo, hamstring, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Knees come back. Hip width distance position again. Four circles, slow, small circles. Moving back in space, moving to the side, pulling forward. So notice there's a bit of lateral movement. Deep hip flexion, lateral, gentle hip extension. One more time. Increasing the range of motion, go the other way. Try not to move your spine. Feel it's just the movement around the hip joints. Do you get that disassociation now? That freedom of motion. Final stretch, everyone. Come onto your tummy. Reach back around. If you need a towel, wrap it around and grab on with the other side. For anyone, if this doesn't feel agreeable, you're more than welcome to do one side or do the quadricep stretch single side to make it more accessible around the knee joint. Otherwise, coming into your bow, but in Pilates we call it the, like it's a breathing exercise. So shoulders back, take a big deep breath into your belly and inflate. Exhale, deflate you'll end up rocking back down. In Pilates, this is called rocking. Inhale. Exhale. Two more in. Out breath. Last one in. Out breath. Release your legs. Tuck your toes, straddling your mat. Sweep back up. Take it wide, bend your knees, just find yourself into your Cossack. How does it feel now? Can you go deeper? Changing sides, I'll face this way. Hopefully a little bit more range of motion into those hips. Just a little tester. And release. Bend the knees, roll yourself up. Hands onto the hip joints, feeling that warmth that you have most likely generated. Take a big deep breath in. Big deep breath out. Tuck the tail under, push your hip bones, your hip joints into your hands. Extend, take your arms up, breathing in. And then guys, just shake it off. Breathing in again, two more of those, shake it off. Last one, up and down. 
and you are done. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope your hips feel a little bit juicier. There's definitely room to play on from this in terms of then working into the standing series of squats, really getting deep, something I might play on with another session. However, I hope you enjoyed that. If you found inspiration and you really enjoyed it, I did leave in the description my social media contacts if you would like to message me. Also, my PayPal details should you wish to make a donation for this class. So greatly appreciated. Apart from that, thank you for joining me and I hope to see you back next Sunday. A theme to be announced. If you have any queries or any shout outs for a theme, I love that. Please get in contact and keep enjoying the wonderful, wonderful sessions on whole health. Have a wonderful Sunday, everyone. Apologize for my sweat, but it's Bali. <laughs> Happy Sunday, happy hips, juicy hips. Thank you, bye.